going on, everybody? Gentleman94 here. Welcome back to Sci-Fi Wednesdays and the Battlestar Galactica Viper Mark 7. This guy has been sitting on my shelf for over two years now, and I figure it's high time I get it out and finish it up. Here's the box top made by Mobius, 132nd scale. Such a cool kit, guys. I really got to tell you, I like this kit a lot. Can't wait to build the other Viper. But right now, we need to finish this one. So what I want to do today is I want to go ahead and try and get some form of paint on the aircraft. I want to go ahead and you know panel shade this, maybe hit some uh, panel lines with some flat black, something like that. The guns, of course, are not on. As you can see, we're going to leave those off for right now. We're not going to do anything with that. Um, I've sanded it. I have prepped it. Everything is in pretty much the exact same condition as it was two years ago when I actually started you know, working on this. But I thought we should definitely finish it because it's such a sweet little kit and it looks great. So I can't imagine when it's actually painted up, it's going to look even better. So let's go ahead and get started. First things, guys, I wanted to do is go ahead and remove the canopy. And I wanted to use this um, paper towel to go ahead and protect the inside of the cockpit. And we're not going to do much uh, masking on the cockpit itself because, you know, I'm just going to stick some paper towel in here and that's going to be sufficient. Um, I guess I could mask the canopy and glue the canopy on, but I actually want to do something different with that. I want to hit it with some Tamiya smoke and give it a little bit of a uh, tinted effect. Um, not too much, because I don't want to lose the detail on the inside of the cockpit that I worked so hard in trying to reproduce, but I definitely want to give it a little bit of a tint. So this is going to be fine. We're just going to take this paper towel using my pin vise and a little bit of a um, poker here. We're just going to go ahead and shove this down without damaging the cockpit or any of the paper decals that I created back, you know, when I first started working on this thing. And it's is pretty much the only thing, you know, we can do. Um, we could use some water on it too. It'll help to kind of uh, adhere it down to itself and kind of retain its shape. But uh, the decals on the inside are not really decals. If I remember correctly, they're paper that I just kind of copied and glued on to the consoles that I scratch built. So I don't want to take a chance of ruining those. So let's not do that. So I'll just use this and just use friction uh, to go ahead and keep it stuck into that uh, cockpit area. But that should be fine. I tell you, it has been a while since I've built any models and I'm a little worried about my airbrushing skills. I have a feeling they're going to be pretty rusty. But you know what? I got to start sometime. Got to get back out there. So this should be a good kind of re-entry into the world of model building and I have sorely missed working on these kits guys. Alright so this is good we are going to use some flat black for the panel lines and we're going to airbrush that at about 15 psi and we're just going to trace each of the panel lines with flat black paint and to do that I'm going to be using let's see I need some uh, let's see what do I need here okay need my brush I'm going to use the back of that as a mixing stick don't have any spare sprue at the time. Also, we need our syringe and our eyedropper. There we are. So these are going to come in handy for sure. And we're going to use our Tamiya thinner. I haven't used Tamiya thinner in a while. This is kind of old. I'm going to use it up, go buy some fresh. And as I usually do, I'm going to pop this top and I'm going to use my syringe, kind of preload some thinner into the uh, syringe, get it ready for uh, for use. Let's undo this. I haven't opened these up in two years, so hopefully they are okay. And uh, this looks okay. All right, so we're all thinned, ready to go. Now let's go ahead and just start there, tracing the panel lines. It doesn't have to be too perfect here. I just want to kind of get the paint down into the panel lines and give it a little bit of contrast and a little bit of shading kind of around the areas. Um, this should be decent enough though. I don't really see this being much of a problem here. Yeah, it's going on well enough. My hands are already kind of shaky though. <laughs> I guess it has been two years since I've done this, so it's definitely not the, uh, the most practiced skill currently. So we're going to go ahead and continue and see how much I can do. We'll check back in in just a moment after I have a bit more done, because this is awfully tedious. I don't want you guys to have to sit through all of this, so we'll be right back. Okay, we are back guys and I've done most of the bottom and about half the top and I'm working on the left um, and right wings right now. So we're currently on the right wing and it's really tedious to trace panel lines with black paint. I don't know why I do it. <laughs> well, I know why I do it, but I, 
yeah, maybe I could come up with a different way to do this next time. Maybe use some washes or something because it is awfully tedious. And the more panel lines you have, just the longer it takes to kind of get in there and get everything highlighted. But it's going to look great. I really have high hopes this is going to look fantastic. Um, and yeah, we're going to want to get all of the thruster ports. You want to get any of the panel lines that we want to accentuate, and we should be good. So there's a little bit of there, a little bit there. Yeah, looking nice, looking good. So we're going to continue, and we're going to trace the rest of the panel lines. And again, I don't want you guys to be bored, so I'll be back once these are all traced and ready to go. See you soon. All right, there you go, guys. Majority of the panel lines are traced in black Tamiya paint. And you can see top and bottom is interesting looking. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's uh, very interesting looking. So i got a few more areas I want to touch up a little bit with my leftover paint. Uh, it shouldn't be too much. Get the intakes there. Give it a bit of depth, a little bit of shadow. But yeah, you can see it's actually turned out decently. So I like it. Looks good. I'm going to get the inside of the engine, I guess, exhaust nozzles as well. Give those a little bit of darkening. We're going to get them painted anyway eventually, but for right now, that should be good. And a few more areas off to the side here. I want to make sure that there's enough black on the panel lines that they really pop when I get them covered with the top coat, but not too much that they look weird and stark. So I want to just to give a hint of definition in these different panel lines. And I've never been very good at this technique, but I'm trying to practice. I'm always getting better, right? You always got to improve. So we'll be right back, see what else I can come up with. All right, this is definitely completed. I have uh, airbrushed all of the panel lines, all of the thrust reports, the um, different areas. And we're going to go ahead and now cover this with light coats of this gray color. And this is actually something I mixed. This is. Um, you know what? Honestly, I forgot the ratio. But then we're going to overcoat that with this blue color, which again, I forgot the ratio. This is something I made back in the day before um, I put everything away in storage. But I know I used this paint, which I have no idea what it is, and this paint, which is uh, both Gunzi and yeah, dark gray and like a light blue. So we're going to go ahead and use the dark gray first. It's a lightened dark gray. And we're not going to use the Tamiya thinner because it's kind of old and it's not really doing its job. So we're going to go back to my tried and true 70% isopropyl alcohol. And again, we're just going to prime the airbrush with a little bit of alcohol so that it uh, flows well. And I've cleaned it. We're all good. So it should, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's good. Good PSI, good air pressure. And, and I think this is going to be fine. This is going to be good. Okay, so... Um, you know what? I'll just dump it in the little little pot on the side here. We can use that later on for sure. Now, let us go ahead and grab our paint. And we're going to use, like I said, this dark gray mixture, which is uh, dark gray and a little bit of white and I believe a little bit of that sky blue color. But still, the majority of it is dark gray. So we're going to load up the airbrush. It's kind of clumpy. I don't like that. <laughs> I probably should have, I don't know, strained it or something, but we'll... Kind of make sure it's mixed up properly. Might have to add a little bit more thinner, but I think it's going to be all right. It's going to work. It's Well, you know what? Might as well just give it a shot, see what happens. Let's grab a paper towel or something, and we'll airbrush into that, make sure we're, uh, we're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. All right. So we're going to take the uh, airbrush here, and we're just going to start at the base, and we're going to lightly cover everything. So we'll be right back and I'll show you what we come up with. All right, guys, here we go. This is the bottom of the Viper. As you can see, we have majority of the panel lines showing through. Um, I've covered most of the aircraft. There are some areas that I didn't cover as well, but that's okay. It'll come out fine, I'm sure. And we're gonna now cover with this lighter blue color. Panels themselves, we're gonna go in the center. We're gonna cover those up, but we're not gonna cover too much because we want that black line to show through. So again, this is that mixture of a uh, light bit of gray and the light blue, probably a little white, if I'm not mistaken. But again, it's been forever, because I made these back two years ago when I was originally going to be doing this painting. Um, so let's load up the airbrush. I made a lot of this, which is good. It also looks really good for Russian blue. I don't think it is Russian blue, but it looks decent enough for it. And yeah, it looks like the paint's flowing well. So we're going to go ahead and start, and we're just going to lightly make passes 
over the model, being very careful not to paint too heavily on the panel lines and allow that darkness and that gray to kind of show through and gives it kind of a transparent effect. It's, it's an interesting effect I'm going for here and I don't know if I'm gonna pull it off, but I'm definitely gonna to try to see what I can do. So you can kind of get an idea that it's kind of tinting everything blue. And I think this is gonna be a good, good move here. So I'm gonna trace on the inside of the panel lines, uh, around the side. Okay, so we're gonna continue with this and I think this is gonna turn out A-OK. -okay. So we'll be back here. I'm going to try to cover majority of the aircraft, and then I'll show you what I come up with. So we'll be right back. All right, and here we are. As you can see, the uh, Viper Mark 7 has its first coat of paint on the bottom of the aircraft, and it looks pretty decent. Um, I like how in different lights you can get the gray showing through, and then you get some of the black showing through on the panel lines. It looks nice. So I'm working on the top right now. So I'm going to continue doing the airbrushing and again just make light passes, very uh, easy passes, nothing too fancy. As you can see guys, we are back and the majority of the Viper Mark 7 has been painted with the blue, the gray, and appreciating the panel lines for the black. I, I like it. I think it looks good. Uh, we're going to touch up little areas here on the vertical stabilizer, make sure that everything is blended nicely. But again, you don't want to put too much on. I want to put just enough so the black lines show through the paint, aren't too stark, and blends in nicely. This is looking great. Now, the guns, of course, we don't have on. We're doing that on purpose because I don't want to knock them off as I'm painting. We'll paint those off the model and then glue them on towards the end. Um, but this is looking pretty decent. I like how this has turned out. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell on the camera because, well, it's I'm using my GoPro and it's not the best at detail work. But, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I like how the uh, colors show through. The next step really is I got to get these engines painted. And what I want to do is I want to use the same colors I used on the uh, inside of the aircraft. I want to hit those nozzles. I want to get everything kind of detail painted up. Let me show you what I come up with. All right, here we are. The engines are painted gray, the same gray. Uh, this is dark gray uh, by Gunzi. And, oh, man, this is looking really nice. I like how this is looking. This is looking good. Um, you can kind of tell, well, hopefully, in different lights, you have different shades of blue and gray that kind of pop through. I use this color um, for the mixing of the original gray and also for just straight out of the bottle for the rear engines. I'm also going to use this for the intakes, the nose, and then the underside intake as well. Again, isopropyl alcohol works great, um, and it's cheap too, and that's good. So let's go ahead and paint up the last little bits here. You can kind of see that these two sections need a little bit of work. And of course, the engine color, same color. We're going to use that for the intakes. I don't know if that's important to do, but you know what? It's fine. It's going to go well, I think, with the rest of the colors. So we're going to use our small detail brush. And yeah, let's just get this open and get some paint on it. I don't know if you guys have trouble with this, but I always end up ripping my labels off of my paint bottles. I hate that because I don't know what color it is. So I'm really trying not to do that. All right, and we're going to get a little bit of thinner. Pardon my giant hand in the camera. And there we go. And yeah, I think we're good. And we're going to just take a little bit of paint. Brush is ready to go. And we're just going to detail paint the uh, intakes. So we'll be right back once that's all finished up. All right, guys, we are done. We have completed what I wanted to do two years ago. And I like how this turned out, especially after not having airbrushed in over two years. I think I did all right for myself. And, man, these labels. Oh, I hate these freaking labels. Come on. Uh, that's the problem with these things. They always end up ripping in half, and then you try to kind of tape them, and then the tape comes off, and it's just it's a nightmare. Um, come on. Come on. There you go. All right. Okay. And you can see the label just fell right off. <laughs> so, oh, annoying. Anyway, guys, so as you can see, the Viper Mark Seven looks the part. I like the color. It turned out actually better than I assumed it was going to. And I don't know, leave a comment. Do you guys like the color or not? Uh, I like it. I think it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and weather it, of course, but all that is for another time. I think that's going to do it for this episode. I'm hoping to get more episodes out to you guys. So next Wednesday, we should have another video for you guys for the Viper Mark 7. And we still have to gloss coat, decal. Until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. 
It is great to be back, and we'll see you soon.